Hello everyone and welcome to our Every Nation Willows online service. My name is Christian and my name is Lisa. You guys are so welcome. We as Every Nation are a global family that exists to honor God. We do that by making disciples, raising leaders and planting churches in every nation. Absolutely. And uh, if this is your first time logging in or viewing one of our, our videos or our services, I want to really welcome you and we really want to trust that you're going to experience God through our service. So um, if you'd like to know more about who we are or you'd like to get connected in a discipleship group, I want to invite you to visit our every nation twane.org website and you can navigate the website and find everything about us that you'd like to see as a family we love to celebrate and being online it's no different so we want to celebrate you if you had any celebrations this week um, feel free to post it in the comment section we are just gonna play pray a short prayer of blessing over you guys Father, thank you that we can celebrate life in this time. Lord, you are so good in every season and every good gift from you, Father, is out variation, Father. And so, Father, we praise you for each and every celebration of life. And Lord, thank you that you are steadfast and your Father, we, we just want to praise you for who you are, Lord. Mm. Yes, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great friends, we've got three quick announcements we'd like to share with you all. Uh, the first one I want to share is our Leaders Ignite. This is coming up next week, Thursday and Friday, the 29th and the 30th of July. Um, so if you are a leader in our Willows context or you know of people who are upcoming leaders um, and you, you see upcoming leaders or you feel like you're an upcoming leader, please sign up for this event. This is one of our most important events in the year where we are gathering as leaders to allow line our hearts. We're going to talk um, about discipleship, the things that God has planned for us in this, uh, in this season. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be an incredible time of encouraging one another. So in the comment section, you will see the links. Please click, sign up, and we look forward to seeing you there. Yes, that is awesome. We also have online prayer on Zoom every Sunday at five o'clock. I want to invite you guys to that. We are going to post the link of for the zoom link on the groups and yes join us for this time of prayer it's so encouraging mm -hmm. we take the morning's message and we pray into it and it's really just encouraging and god has really been yeah. stirring in our hearts that um he has called this church to be a house of prayer and mm. i want to invite you guys to join us it's really awesome absolutely final announcement um we also in this time recognize that uh, during COVID everything there's a lot of need and we as a church we really want to be there for everyone as far as we can in your need so um, we have a whatsapp group where we pray together where we can give care to one another um, if you are willing to give care will you please join the whatsapp group and if you want to receive care we have a link that's also posted in the comment section that you can fill in to receive prayer or to receive any other kind of help um, that we'd like to give you. Um, so please let us care for you in this time. Let us be a family for you. Um, we love you all. And um, yeah, we trust you will enjoy the rest of the service with us. Yes, with all this being said, we are going to hand over to Fred that's going to lead the worship for us. I really want to invite you guys to worship God mm -hmm. from your spirits and really to just enjoy His presence in this time. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we serve a God that is not limited to technology. So okay. may you really experience Him in this time and may you worship Him with all your hearts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good morning, family. It's so good to be with you once again in your homes all across the city. My name is Fred from the Willows Congregation. It's good to be with you this morning as we just turn our attention towards the King and just worship Him together. Amen.
Come the Holy Spirit Flow living water Flow within us Flow living water Your love is alive It's breaking the darkness It's bringing the light Soften the heart of stone Your love is alive It's breaking the darkness It's winning the fight Bringing the orphan Tando, tando Wako, wako give you praise Lord Jesus we fix our eyes on you Lord worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever pray worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Yeah, we live for you And holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those around me we sing worthy worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you, oh, we live for you. Sing Jesus, Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Yeah, we live for you, holy, and holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to the. Around and 
Lord of all. Thank you, Fred and the team, for that incredible time of worship through music. Family, I want to encourage us to, in this time, seek God and seek His presence. The scripture tells us that the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. And that is my prayer for us as a spiritual family. To seek God, experience His presence, and be refreshed. Now, family, today we are continuing with our sermon series entitled, We Are the Church. And today, Eugene Kutsia will be sharing with us regarding the responsibility of the church. It's my privilege to um, introduce Eugene Kutsia. Eugene has a massive heart for social responsibility and to see us as a movement living out this part of our mission statement. Eugene is currently serving as the CEO of Beulah Africa and the Every Nation Swanee Community Foundation, which are both non-profit organizations. Eugene is also part of our Every Nation Linwood congregation and serving on the leadership team there. Family, I encourage you just to open your heart and make your heart receptive to the Word of God today as we listen to the message. Hello everyone. Good day on this uh, cold uh, morning. Um, um, I hope you are doing well. I hope you're full of faith and you're trusting Jesus in this time and that you are looking towards Him um, as, as this is a time in our nation um, like never before that the church must arise, amen? And it's like never before that we need to look to Jesus and not to, to circumstances. Um, I'm Eugene, and uh, it's a privilege this morning to share the word with you. It's a privilege to, uh, to preach the word to you. You guys are in a powerful sermon series where you are speaking about the church, how relevant in this time. And, um, and uh, this morning, I'm going to be speaking about, as we continue in this series, I'm going to be looking at just the responsibility of the church as we're speaking about being socially responsible. As part of our mission statements, every nation, um, you know, we, we exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, but also socially responsible churches and campus ministries um, across the nations. And so um, I'm excited. We're going to be looking at this. And we're going to be looking at the life and the ministry of Jesus and, and um, looking at His life to define biblically what's, what a socially responsible church is or what a socially responsible disciple should be like, what it, what, what it is biblically, what does it mean, and so what then is the responsibility of the, of the church in, in this regard. And um, if, we, if we look at the life of Christ and, and we look at the mission of Jesus, you know, he, it, it was a, His mission was extended by His disciples. Um, it was started by him. It was his mission. Um, and now today it is the ch- it's not the church's mission. It's God's mission that the church is on. And so in terms of social responsibility, what does this look like? And um, like I said, we're looking at the life of Jesus. And for this, I am going to be looking at a scripture, at, a, at, a, at an incident and that depicts just uh, so many incidents of Jesus' life and his ministry. Um, and the scripture we're going to be looking at is Mark um, I mean, Matthew um, 8, chapter 1 to 4. The scripture is also found, or the story specifically, of Jesus healing a leper in Mark, uh, chapter 1, verse 40. I'm going to make some reference to it. Um, but um, we're going to, let's dive into the scripture and, um, and, and, and see what the word is saying to us this morning. And so Matthew, uh, chapter 8, verse 1 to 4. When he came down the mountain, that's Jesus, Great crowds followed him, and behold, a leper came to him, and he knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Verse 3, and Jesus stretched out his hand, and he touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priests, and offer the gift that Moses commanded uh, as proof to them. And so um, before we jump into the scripture, you take a moment and, and just open up in prayer for us. Father, I pray that your word would speak to us this morning. I pray that your word would bring conviction and clarity. Holy Spirit, open up the life and ministry of Jesus and help us to see what we are called to as the church. Um, and that we will not just um, uh, have some knowledge about your life and ministry, but we will be moved so that we can act in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I mean, so from the scripture, I'm going to be looking at just three things that stands out concerning social responsibility and the church. Number one, the mission of social responsibility. Number two, the sign of social responsibility. And number three, the power of socially, social, <laughs> social responsibility. And so number one, um, the mission of social responsibility. In, in verse one, he says, when he came down from the mountain and then the crowd started to follow him. And so when we look at the ministry and the life of Jesus, um, he was always amongst the people. Uh, Jesus didn't stay in the comfort of the mountain with his father. It was his custom to wake up early in the morning. He would have his devotion, so to speak, and he would pray to his father. But then Jesus didn't stay there in the comfort of, you know, his, of the presence uh, of, you know, of God. He went down into the valley. He went down to the people. Um, he went to go see where they are, who they are. Um, Jesus went to the people. So mission is all about going, right? Mission is not about staying. It's not about waiting. It's a call to go to. Um, it's, it's not to wait for. And so um, many, many people are uh, passively involved in social responsibility, meaning that they are waiting for. We are waiting for the church to give us you know, to tell us about a need. We are waiting for, uh, um, you know, the Department of Social Responsibility in our church, um, you know, to, to do something. And then maybe I, I, you know, if they convince me hard enough, I will give something towards them. And see, for Jesus, this was not the separation. For Jesus, social responsibility was not a department in his ministry. It was all about who he was and what he came to do as the mission sent by God and now continued by the church, us, his disciples, those who are following him. For Jesus, there was not this separation. It was not an NGO. It was not a welfare organization or a department in the church. For Jesus, it was part of the mission. But what Jesus did was he left the comfort of where he was. See, we cannot be socially responsible you know, from our office chairs or our meeting rooms or even the four corners of the church walls. We need to get out. We need to go and look. We need to move amongst the people. We need to see where they are. You see, for Jesus, social responsibility meant proximity. For Jesus, he, had to, he, he wanted to show his disciples that we need to get close to the people. We can't change lives from a distance. We need to get close to them. We need to move among them. And to really understand the issues in communities, friends, to understand who people are and what they've gone through, we need to get close. Um, many a times, uh, I mean, in the last week, two weeks on a nation, has been devastating, looking at um, just how the majority, or not the majority, um, a lot of people are looting um, our nation. And so many, the majority of those people are poor people. And... Um, when it comes to poor people, I've heard a lot of people, even Christians, saying, oh, you know, the poor are lazy and, or they are useless. But then I would think to myself, have you gone, have you, have you climbed down from your mountain? <laughs> have you moved into their lives? Have you understand where they come from, what, why they are where they are, and what has happened to them? And so Jesus was trying to show his disciples that you need to get close. For you to understand really the issues and the problems in communities, um, we cannot solve it from, from a, um, a boardroom. We need to get down into the lives of people, walk amongst the community and the people. Um, I remember um, as a young Christian, myself and a friend, we used to reach out into the inner city of Pretoria. And still then, I think I had a lot of prejudges concerning the poor and people that are in you know, desperate need um, or are vulnerable and and I remember, you know, reaching out to, to, to these people and um, we would go there night after night, bring them food. And once I started just hearing the stories of these people and hearing, uh, I remember this one guy, um, um, his name was John, him and his girlfriend. They were young. They were, you know, on drugs. They couldn't get free. Um, living in drain pipes, literally in, in the inner city. And just hearing their story. This guy was born in a uh, prison cell. That's the, the start of his life. That's where he was born. 
and, and the rest of his life is, is just horrific. And we look at these people sometimes and go, yeah, you know, come on, you know, you know just, just get with the program. Um, but we cannot change lives if we don't get close to him. And um, fortunately, I had the privilege of leading this guy to Christ after a couple of weeks. But the point is this, um, is we need to get close. And we see in, in, in Mark, um, where, the story, where Mark depicts the story, that um, uh, Jesus was moved with compassion. The leper came to him, and then the scripture says in, in verse 40, Jesus was moved with compassion. Something happens when we get close to people. We are moved with compassion. And so the only thing that's going to um, move us into action is compassion. It's compassion. It's not just good enough to, to, to know. It's compassion will move us. And um, Jesus was moved with compassion. In the same way, when we get close, when we go to people, when we get down from the comfort of our living rooms, our houses, our churches even, um, and we see, we will start to understand what the real needs are in communities. And uh, our eyes will open up to who they are, what they've gone through. And we will be moved with compassion. We'll be moved with compassion. And so being the church, uh, being a socially responsible church means going to the hard places like Jesus. Going to the poor, going to the needy, to the sick and to the, to the outcast. Number two the sign of social responsibility, Matthew 8, verse 3. And Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched him, saying, Be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And so Jesus stretched out his hand to the leper. Now, just some context a leper in that day, uh, leprosy was a sickness um, that was terrible. There was no cure for it. Um, your, it was a, a disease that affected your skin and many parts of your, your body and your nervous system. Lepers were outcast in society. There was such stigma around them. No one wanted to come near them. People, um, you know, they were, you know, uh, hated them, really. They didn't want, they were f afraid of them. They were outcasts. And so Jesus did something that is crazy in that time. Um, he stretched out his hand and he touched the leper. He touched, this, he, he touched this man. He was deliberate. Why? Why did Jesus do that? He could have just said at a distance, be healed. And then he touched him, but he didn't. Why? He was trying to tell his disciples, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to be, if you're going to be my followers, you have to stretch out your hand to the most broken and vulnerable in community. You see, this guy represented all those no one wanted to go to. He was saying, as the church, are you going to be my church? You need to stretch out your hand to those no one wants to stretch out their hands to. It is the call of the church. It's not enough that we just have compassion and we feel pitiful to people. We need to do something. We need to go. We need to stretch out our hands. We need to touch them. You know, I think the, um, many times the, the vulnerable, the poor, the outcasts in our society um, kind of are treated like lepers. Um, because of their condition, they are excluded. They're excluded from the economy. They're excluded from education, from health care, um, from opportunities. And see, the more they are excluded, the worse their situation get. The worse their situation get, um, the more they are excluded. And people are, keep them at a distance. But it are those, it's those people which we ignore, which end up looting our nation, stealing us, and killing. They turn to, to only that which they can survive. And Jesus was trying to show that you need to get your hands dirty. We need to stretch out our hands. You know, our nation... 50% of our nation is in desperate poverty. Half. And that number is rising of our nation. The, the Gini coefficient or um, the inequality on our nation is the highest in the world. And so that means 10% of the population owns 70% of all the resources. Um, we moved, I think, a couple of weeks ago, you know, um, into the top 10, top 20 of um, the highest unemployment unemployment. Um, percentage number in the world. Our nation, um, uh, if we look at um, our nation and we look at the condition, it is our responsibility. It is not the problem of government or of NGOs. It is our responsibility. It is the church's responsibility to get their hands dirty and to not ignore what's happening around us. And we cannot just simply play church on Sundays and listen to great messages. 
Jesus was saying, stretch out your hand. Um, get your hands dirty. It is there where um, you'll see the miracles. It's there where you see the miracle of a leper changed. It's there where Jesus is. And it's there where you will see change. Uh, people were afraid of lepers, right? But Jesus was not afraid. He showed them that you do not need to be afraid. Um, I think many a times we don't go to these hard places and people. It's sometimes even in your own community, your neighbor, or whether it is in poor communities or even in your own affluent community. Sometimes we're afraid. We're afraid of your, your life or you're afraid of sickness. Maybe it's a fear of lack. You know, I, I don't want to give because I don't know if I would have tomorrow, given the conditions of what the coronavirus provided us. But love is unafraid, friends. Love is unashamed. And Jesus came to show them, you know, actual love is stretching out our hands and touching people. It's not at a distance. It's close. It's personal. I, the late Floyd McClung, personal hero of mine, Uncle Floyd, he writes in his book, Seeing the City Through God's Eyes. He says, The moral fiber of a nation can be seen in the way that it treats its most vulnerable. And so, the sign of social a social responsible church is, the, is a church who stretches out their hands, not only to their neighbor, but the most needy and vulnerable in society. And then finally, the power of social responsibility. And we're going to be looking at just um, the account of Mark, chapter 40. And so Jesus healed the leper. He touched him, um, the guy with leprosy. And it left him. And then Jesus said to him, you know, don't go tell people. Go and show yourself to, um, um, to the priests and do what Moses commanded. And then verse 45, he says, um, but he went out and he began talking freely about it and spread the news. This guy couldn't help it. He was touched so deeply that he couldn't help speak about it. Even the guy, who, you know, Jesus commanded him saying, do not go <laughs> and tell everyone this guy couldn't help it. You see, the power of social responsibility is that it opens up doors for the gospel to be preached. Like never before, I believe, in our nation, now is the opportunity for the church to arise and, and for us to be socially responsible. And it's not some department that's not separated from preaching the gospel. Um, it's part and parcel of the gospel is us going to the most needy and going to those who are in need, to the poor, to the oppressed, to the vulnerable, to the orphan, to the widow. And it's not just helping them, it is preaching the gospel. But what it does is, it opens up the door for the gospel. I had this beautiful story from one of our Every Nation pastors. Um, there was this man, he um, was stirred by God to do something about just the needs in his community, but he didn't know where to start. And on his way to work, um, he noticed, you know, at, in the train station, there was two beggars that was always there. And he didn't know what to do, so he started praying. And he prayed, and then just one morning he woke up and he thought, he's just going to go early and he'll meet them. And he didn't know what to do, but he went to them and he just started speaking to them. He, he went and he looked, he stretched out his hand. Um, and from there, he went every morning, he would wake up and he would take them sandwiches he would speak to them, meet, meet with them every single morning before work. And um, he would run and uh, he would do things for them and help them. And then one day, um, when he got there, just there was only one of the beggars left, um, one of these homeless people. And so he asked, you know, where is this person? And the person said, last night, my friend just died. This guy was devastated. And he started crying. Interesting stuff started happening. The, this homeless community just kind of embraced this guy and hugged him. And they did it in the, the, this homeless community said, listen, thank you for helping us and our friend. W wouldn't you come and do his memorial service? And so this guy was a Christian. He went and he did their, he, this, this um, homeless guy's memorial service with so many other beggars and homeless people around. And here's what happened. This guy preached the gospel to all of them and they got saved. A small, just a relationship, waking up early in the morning, just meeting with, opened up an opportunity for the gospel. Friends, social responsibility, the power of social responsibility, it opens up nations, it opens up communities, and opens up the heart of people for the gospel to be shared. And so the power of social responsibility, it opens up um, the heart of people. 
Um, as I conclude, um, I'm thinking about Matthew 25, and we're thinking about the responsibility of the church when it comes to social responsibility, and, um, and, and how sometimes we maybe see it as the separate thing. It is something that, you know, a department does, or someone that is called for does it. No, for Jesus, it was part of the mission of who He was, who He is, and what He is called to do. And so in Matthew 25, we see this, um, the, the Jesus speaking to His disciples about the end times, and He tells them about, um, and, and I'm just going to fall into, not, not read everything, but um, He's talking about at the end times, He would gather everyone, and this, the sheep and the goats, and He would separate them. And He's speaking about the sheep here, and the sheep is, He said, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was strange, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And then the righteous will say, but Lord, when did we do all these things to you? And he said, um, and the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. And it's interesting how Jesus associates himself with the most vulnerable in society. He almost says, this. it's almost like, you know, when you hurt my brother, you hurt me. And Jesus is saying, my church, I have died for them. I have died for these people. And it's the mission of my church that you would go to them. The sign of the, ch- the, sign of the power of the church is not just that the comfort of reaching out to those who come to the church, but us going to the church, to the most needy, to the most vulnerable, to the most broken. Therein lies the power of Christ. Friends, I believe that Jesus will not look at the government, about the poor people in our nation, about the, the, the issues of inequality and um, racism and the divide. He will, he will look at the church. We are His instrument. You are His instrument for change and transformation. When we look at the Scriptures, when God wanted to do something in the nations or in a nation, when we look at the Bible, 99 to 95% of the time, He looks for His people. When it comes to vulnerable, poor, broken, outcasts, orphans, in society, and God wants to do something, who do you think He's looking for? He's looking for His church. He's not looking for the institution. <laughs> He's looking for, 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 for you and me. I remember I just moved into a new um, complex, and this lady found out I was a pastor, and she brought me just a bunch of clothes, like bags and bags of clothes. And she's like, yeah, the church, you know, yes, yeah, this is for the church. And I'm thinking, for the church, what must I do with the clothes? You see, the problem with this lady was she thought, you know, that being socially responsible is giving stuff to the church, and the church will do it. Socially responsible by association. (laughs) No, friends. The church is called to be socially responsible. It is part and parcel of seeing the kingdom of God come, being established on earth. It's part of the gospel being preached in every community and every nation. Um, God has called us to be socially responsible. I want to encourage you, from the scripture, that God, God is calling you and I to go and look. He's calling you and I to, to see the needs around us. He's asking us to stretch out our hands and touch even the most difficult, the most vile, those society you don't even like. And He's asking us to preach the gospel to them, to bring the good news to them. And I believe like never before, friends, now is the time in our nation like never before that the church must arise. You, some of you are called, you are called to bring a radical transformation in society. As some of you, I mean like William Wilberforce, he wanted to be clergy. And God said to him, no, you're going into government. And he changed a policy. He abolished slavery. Three days later, he died. Some of you are called to transform the educational system, the healthcare system. Um, but we don't need to, to, you know, we've got dreams to change the world, but it starts with one. Can you just reach out to one? Can you go and look? <laughs> Can you stretch out your hand? <laughs> Can you greet? God is calling us, friends. He's calling us to be the church in this hour. He's calling you and I to arise now, and then everyone will see the glory of God. Then everyone will know and see who God is. Amen? And so, as I, as I end off, my prayer is that, um, uh, that, that you would, that you would um, align your heart with God and that you would see the life and ministry of Jesus and the gospel being preached and being socially responsible, not as two separate things, but as one. And that it is, 
And it is um, the power to see lives open up. Um, I want to pray for us and, um, and then just ask you one or two questions of, of reflection. Um, church, now is the hour. <laughs> now is the time um, to go. Father, thank you um, for this ministry that you've given us, for this mission to go. Um, I pray that as a church, Lord, we will open up our eyes. We would, we would get down, we would come down from our mountains. We will walk among the people. We would, um, um, yeah, we would get out of our office chairs, out of our um, companies, our homes, our meetings, and we would go to the people who would see them. We'd experience what they experience. Uh, that would be the church for them where they are. We would touch them, meet their needs. Um, I pray that as a church that we would arise. Father, um, I pray that just every single one of us, that we would be moved with compassion um, and that you would empower us through your spirit and by faith to move into these hard places um, and to see great change in our nation. And that you may be glorified, God, um, in Jesus' name. A friend's final thought is, um, it all starts for me really with prayer. Prayer is not something that we do to, you know, bend God's arm for Him to do something. No, prayer is aligning our hearts with God's. And it's a time that we start to intercede for the condition of our nation. And God will move our hearts. Um, may you be the church. May you arise to be followers of Christ, as the Bible is calling us to be. As your Savior and Lord, who died for you, is calling us to be. Um, church, uh, I love you. <laughs> And I love the church. May we be the church. God bless you and may you have an incredible week. Goodbye. Thank you, Eugene, for that message. Family, I want to encourage us to imitate Jesus, to like in the scripture, reach out and touch those that are vulnerable and marginalized. I believe as we do this, we will see the power of God working through us as individuals and as a church to transform our community and our society. Now, family, let's get practical. How can we live out this mission of being a socially responsible church? Firstly, I believe each one of us has the responsibility to live as a socially responsible disciple of Jesus. Now, there's a million ways that you can express this value, but I have just a few examples that I can share with you. You can keep just some extra fruit or some food in your car and give that to a beggar at the robot. Maybe you can just make your network available to someone that's currently looking for a job. Maybe you can pay for a child's education. A family being socially responsible doesn't always mean giving money or sharing. Sometimes it just means giving time. Making time to listen to somebody. Making time to listen to their story. Really reacting with compassion to the situation and the circumstances that somebody finds themselves in. And to like Jesus, just listen to the person's story, but also to listen to God. And to trust God for a miracle in that situation. Secondly, you can be part of one of our initiatives or projects. Citywide, we've been running the Get Help and Give Help initiative during COVID and lockdown. We've been able to assist more than 340 families through this initiative by giving them food vouchers or various forms of financial support and also medical support. You can be part of this initiative by donating to the details uh, on the screen. And I want to thank everybody that's already donated towards this uh, Give Help Fund. Then also precious blessings. The last few weeks, unfortunately, because of lockdown uh, regulations, we've not been able uh, to take volunteer teams to Precious Blessings, but Heidi notified me that in the next few weeks they will be gradually opening up the home again for volunteers to be able to come. So if you want to get involved, please contact Heidi um, on the number on the screen. They really deeply miss all of our volunteers and um, look forward to seeing you at the home again. Family, thank you for joining us for Church Online and let me just close for us in prayer today. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can see your example in Scripture and see how you treated uh, the vulnerable and the marginalized people in society, God. And I pray that as followers of you, as your disciples, that we will also be socially responsible and act with your love and your care 
and with your power to we, towards these individuals within our churches and out of, outside of our churches. I thank you that you are the one that's going to lead us in this and Holy Spirit also I thank you for empowering us and uh, that we are able to trust you for miracles as we, as we reach out and touch these vulnerable peoples. Amen. Thank you for joining us family. We'll see you next week.